Tesla Model Y. You know, looking at it, it looks real smooth. The outer fenders on the outside, it looks like it's flaring out, so it's got that nice bulge to it. It makes it look like it's really rough and it's ready to get and hit the roads. I like how it slopes up in the back side of that trunk space there. And it's really cool because the back side there, it lifts up kind of like it shows like it's an aerodynamic feature. Now, this one is the long range version and you can see that it comes standard with the blackouts around the side of the vehicle like that. It makes it look cool, makes it look clean. A lot of people in the Model 3s, they take their cars and they customize it to look like that too. Coming up off the ground, you can see how high it is to the ground. And it's not gonna be too much of a difference here, but when you go and drive it, it sure feels like there's a lot more space here. can see how the front of it is smoothed off like that. I like that smoothed off look. It looks really clean. I think this blue color makes it contrast good in comparison to how it looks because you know those panels on the side there, the skirts on the side, this trim around the side here it blends in good with this tire here and this blue color here. All throughout the sides of the cameras, you could see that this is recording onto a disc that I have set up in the inside of the car. Here I have the console. You could see that inside of here, you get access to the inside here and right here you can see that that's where I have the sentry mode all set up to. Now it did just rain a little bit so I see that there's some kind of issues here at the tail light with some condensation in there but still it is a good hatchback feature and you can store a lot of stuff here in this hatch right here. It's a nice open space which can store a lot of things like my ice box and I can store my drone and all kinds of more stuff back here. Kind of arcs up in the back right there. I like it though. It's very open. The top of this hatchback you just push the button and then it'll raise down this hatch here like so and that's pretty cool like you don't see a lot of that in the model 3 because it's really restricted but you can see how this whole roof side up here it's all glass right here and when you sit up inside of it it's pretty cool because you can look straight up in the view back here. It's pretty amazing. You can see that this is an all panoramic roof right here. You got a whole bunch of things to look at back here through that glass roof. Like that's pretty cool. You get up to it and you can see how it's a nice kind of a curvature. It's pretty spanking new. Now you can see that there's a camera right here and that's recording the right side. But there's also other ones that are laid out throughout the car. And this is right here, another camera right here. That'll give a good capture. There's my wife. 
today we're celebrating our seven year anniversary and we're just going for a drive in this thing taking it on out it's a pretty cool car it's fun to get out and about in this weather and enjoy I think it's good it's really silent up here up front you can't really hear a lot of what's going on Look at that, would ya? It's a beautiful creation. Elon Musk has been saying that this car right here is going to be selling probably the most out of all of the Tesla models that are currently released. More so, he thinks, than the Model S, more so than the Model X or the 3. Originally, this was planned for production later, but he got this out and he got it produced in about a year since he was announcing that this was going to be available. I think it looks cool. These door handles, I think that this is a good concept to use because on the Model S and Model X, these things flush forward, but having this door handle pop out like that, that just goes to show you that it's more of a mechanical failure kind of a design. Like it's not more likely to fail. And you know, when you do this, you watch the window up here, it goes up and down slightly. See, see how that window goes up right there? It's pretty neat. The Model Y. It's a dual motor, so in case one of the motors ever fails, you still got a backup motor to go off of and I think that's a good idea just in the event that you know if you're gonna be driving and the front ones go out at least you still got the back ones to go off of and you can still drive around these wheels these are the aerodynamic versions of it I mean it looks good I think they look better than the 18 inch rims that are on the Model 3. So this is the interior of the Tesla Model Y. It's basically the Model 3, but it's put up higher and it's very comfortable. I like how it's positioned here. Everything here is pretty good. I have control of everything through this tablet here up front and I've Got my foot off the brake, but it's at a complete standstill right now because of the fact that it doesn't have a creep forward kind of mode when it's being driven. It's a nice kind of a cloudy day today, but you could see everything up here through this panoramic kind of a rooftop line. It's nice. I mean, this instant torque, you get instant torque here. I mean, it's pretty good to have that kind of torque. We're already doing 60 from a standstill, so it just goes to show that this car has a lot of power. So the height of this, my impression of it is that it's higher up off the ground than the Model 3. It is seven inches up higher than the Model 3 and it's got one inch more of ground clearance than the Model 3 does so it is a higher car for sure and um, oh, <laughs> and uh, you know that's good that's good for clearing things in the area like when you're trying to when you're trying to just drive you want to make sure that you're clearing things curves and whatnot it's a good experience to be able to do that. I mean, you don't want to be able to, you want to cruise over everything real steadily. And this is a rough road that I'm driving on right now. This road, it's kind of rough. And honestly, in my Forerunner, it was going over it pretty roughly. And the suspension in this car, it just goes to show that this is a good suspension. It's cruising along very good. and. I like this huge screen up front. It's I got a good navigation system here. The navigation is 
built in through Google Maps, so it's very accurate. It's very, it's very good. I mean, people know Google Maps is very reliable and trustworthy. I like personally using Waze, and it'd be nice if they had a feature built in through Waze through here, but you know, as far as it goes right now, as is, it's pretty nice. It even shows your PSI here, and you can display different kinds of th things here through the navigation and whatnot, but very cool. Here, here's even a big backup camera so you could see what's going on behind. It's kind of neat, right? Mm -hmm. Although I have to say the back view of this car, the visibility of it, the back window isn't that big, but that's all right. I mean, you got cameras throughout this whole car here and we're gonna take this to the park and kind of drive it around and see what kind of a uh, good scenery we can get with this. Plenty of storage back here. I mean, for a family, it'd be nice, but let's show what it looks like when you're sitting back here also. Okay. It's a one way to use these holders up here you could use it for your mask holder <sighs> but okay so I'm in the back seat of here and there's a lot of room here my legs are comfortable back here and you could see there's plenty of space down here to put my feet in any kind of position my feet is clearly under here I'm about five foot eleven and even over here in the middle People could put their feet in here and move around the middle seat. There's a nice armrest here that you could put down and the people in the middle can use this as a drink holder in the back. I just really like this whole panoramic all glass roof up top. I've never seen anything so expansive up there. The inside of here it's a good control board here. You can see all the controls and everything up front there. In the very middle seat, it is kind of firm. Now, the Model 3 seats compared to these seats in the Model Y, I've noticed that it's a lot more comfortable. One thing I want to note for the people sitting in the back is that there's a latch here, so you can adjust it and kind of tilt back and lean back. People say that your head it hits the top of this thing. I'm 5'11 it's not hitting it right there. I think it's comfortable. I think if you're like six feet or taller it might hit the top of that thing though. It's nice to have that kind of feature back here for the passengers back here. All right we're getting done shopping. Gonna go load this up. It's got a lot of storage space here. There we go. That's how you know it's unlocked. Warming up out here. I got a lot of stuff in here already. I got my drone in here. Now I'm gonna pack this thing full. I like how I can stand up completely and my head's not hitting this. Okay, let's put it down. All we gotta do to put it down here. There we go. It is put down. Now we can move all this stuff up and make some room as need be. A lot of stuff in there. Yeah. Oh. Lots and lots of room. This blue color is not bad. Not bad. 
You know, I thought that this car would be a lot harder than it was because the sun is out. But when I'm in here, it doesn't feel that hot even though this glass roof is up here like this. And you would imagine that the sun is coming through beaming in this Texas heat. It's actually bearable. I think that this could work in the summertime out here too. All glass roof. All right, so we got everything loaded up into the car and now we're just gonna go and get something to snack on. Okay. We are in drive now. Just like that. I'm gonna go and just silently move along. This car is so quiet. I like how quiet it is. It makes it easier to enjoy the peacefulness. These seats definitely feel a lot more comfortable but than the Model 3s. I like sitting higher up on the road also. Alright, got it parked now. Sit the beam with it. And when the mirrors fold in, it's good. Is that from up there? No. Oh no. Maybe we should park it over there. You know, the number one thing about driving a Tesla is that there's no gas fees that are involved with driving it. From my personal experience, it's nice just using an electricity because it's a lot more cost efficient. Plus, you don't have to worry about parking in a sketchy area where a gas station is and possibly confronting some criminals. We left earlier with about 92% charge on the battery and right now we're doing pretty good. We have here, let me flip this around, a 64% battery here. So that's pretty good. It shows how much we can go with this. And, you know, there's lots of different things here that this tablet here in the middle shows you. It says there's no recent supercharging. But I could go to a supercharger and then charge it up very quickly in less than 30 minutes, you know? It's very easy to do and very user-friendly. That's what I really like about driving this Tesla. You know, this being a brand new car, there's not a lot of things that you'd expect to be wrong with it, but one thing that I immediately noticed was that this tail light was fogged up like that. And as far as how the panels fit, I'm taking a look around the car and seeing that things are lining up in the spots that they're supposed to line up pretty good over here where the hood is this all seems to be okay it's nice tight fit so that's good that's important that all that's fitting together all right so now we're at the supercharger i gotta go in get this going here get juiced up show you how this works just got to push that button right there and then that pops right open you plug that in you want to see this light turn green okay it's plugged in let's take a look inside It's charging, okay. Charge limit is set to 80%, adjust if needed. So we're charging right now. And my wife is looking for some good songs. Oh, yeah. I oh, oh, but you found some good songs? <laughs> She's on the hunt for some good songs. 
And you know, this is good stuff right up here too. Karaoke. Karaoke. You don't want a karaoke? No. Oh, okay. There's lots of things to do while you charge up. See, 20%, uh, 20 minutes till it's um, 50% here. Mm -hmm. So that'll charge up pretty fast, another 30%. Very good. So these Tesla chargers, they're located in various spots. And this one right here happens to be in the Arlington Ballpark Center. AT&T Stadium is back there where the Dallas Cowboys play. And also the baseball games go on. So it's a nice scenic view out here. You can catch Looks like we got 15 more minutes in this charge. It's charging at 358 miles an hour. So it's filling up fast. We're gonna just go for a walk and enjoy the scene out here. Lock it up real quick. Oh, it's windy. Windy day. There's a Model S over there. Uh, it's not too bad with the wind though. I mean, it feels nice. When we pulled up through here, all the stalls were pretty full. And that's how it usually is in the big city, but they don't charge very long. They're here for like 15, 20 minutes, just as long as they need to get going to their next destination. And then they head out. So I think about now our supercharging, it's going to be good. Let's check it real quick here. Oh, got to use my key to unlock it. Here we go. says supercharging time remaining five minutes so that's good enough we'll just unplug it here it's at 75 percent okay then plug it up that's it that's all you got to do and then just put that down and we are ready we're at 76%. Mm -hmm. So now I have autopilot engaged and it is tracking the car in front of me here. And all I got to do is just pay attention to the road and pay attention to if it gives me a sign here of to apply slight pressure to the steering wheel so that it knows that I'm paying attention to my surroundings. This makes for more of a pleasant driving experience. I think this right here, since it's driving by itself, makes for a less stressful kind of way to drive. And for long trips or long roads, it really is the way to drive. Alright, and it's easy to take over when you don't want autopilot to drive for you. But if you do, you just tap that knob down two times and then I got my hands and foot off the road here. And it's driving all through the computer. Everything is automated here. It's staying between the lines and everything looks good. You can even see that it's detecting cones here on the screen and sure enough there's some cones over there to the side amazing how the autopilot keeps getting better and better and it gets better and better with time it constantly uses the algorithm of other drivers and it's a smart processor it knows how to detect many many situations per second so we have picked up some more Korean food and the space in this car is amazing. There's so many pockets and wells and dips. You could fold the seat back. You see in this side pocket here, 
This is all extra space down here. That's yeah. what we're you see. Yes, we could put all of our ramen down here. There's even another level right under there too, if we really wanted to use it. But okay, that's good for our shopping today. Good job shopping. We bought a lot of good stuff today. So we are getting ready to go to the supercharger here and something that this car does is precondition the battery for fast charging. So that helps to build the speed up of the battery charging at the supercharger. So that's a very good thing that's different from the Model Y comparing it to like the Model S or the Model X. That is good. We like fast charging it. All right, I am supercharging it and getting a full charge here. Just pulled up to here and this supercharger, it's kind of cool looking. If you look on the other side here, you can see how there's the supercharger there and then there's all these machines right here. I've never seen the machines look like that before, but let's see what kind of a charge I'm getting inside. I'm charging right now and it is saying that I'm getting 219 miles an hour. So that's pretty good. Within 30 minutes, I'll be able to get to my calculated range. I've seen it higher before charging, but you know, that's still pretty good for how it's charging up and how I have been using this car today. All right, so my final thoughts about that Tesla Model Y and my impressions of it is that it's a very practical vehicle. You can use it to haul groceries around in, you can use it to transport passengers in it, you can use it as a good family car, and it's a lot of fun to drive. There's a lot of instant torque, there's a lot of great efficiency with the battery that's used in there. Even though it's a heavier car than the Model 3, I think that it's a good vehicle to use because about 300 miles of range, you can realistically use that to get to places and especially with the vast supercharger network that's in place, you can take advantage of supercharging. All in all, I used about 200 miles today and it only took me about $3 in supercharger fees so that's really a great savings compared to gasoline cost anyways thank you for watching today's video on the tesla model y and me giving your impressions of what's going on with the vehicle there's not a lot of tesla models y's on the road when i was at the supercharger networks i was the only one that was out there now that it's back in full production and the Shanghai plant is up and running, the Gigafactory over there is up and running, I think a lot more of these will be shipping out in the near future. Anyways, thank you for watching my video today. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and take a look at my videos in the past. And there's a lot of different kinds of reviews on products and things on current events different kind of product reviews. So hit the like button, share this video out, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.